Welcome to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. With miles of coastline and a great climate, it's no wonder so many folks, including us, are calling this place home. But is it really as affordable as you think it is? In this video, we're going to be breaking down the cost of living in Fort Lauderdale in 2023. There's no doubt Florida's a great place to live. Great beaches, the weather's terrific, people are friendly. But, so let's just go ahead and get to it. <laughs> This is Kev with the Morris Group, and this is your first time on the channel, Living in Fort Lauderdale with Kevin Sues, and you want to learn everything there is to know about eating, sleeping, working, playing, dancing, enjoying, dining, and basically just enjoying the lifestyle here in Fort Lauderdale, and of course, the cost of living in Fort Lauderdale, then go ahead and tap the button to subscribe, okay, and every time you do a new video. Yeah. And, and folks, we get so many calls and so many emails from, every, from folks coming in every day that want to know, have information about what it's like to live down here in paradise. So um, you can go ahead and fill your information out on the screen below, okay? Or you can skip all that and just go ahead and book a Zoom call with us to find out so we can talk about what it is, your, what your plans are, okay? What you're looking to do, okay? And how we can assist you in, in doing that. So what is the cost of living? So, so folks, in Fort Lauderdale, the cost of living can be a bit high, but it really all depends upon your lifestyle. If you're looking for the luxurious lifestyle, you can certainly find it here. But if you're looking for a more simple lifestyle, it's definitely possible to find that as well. Basically, what it really what, what you're looking for, what everybody's looking for. So typically, so let's go ahead and get into, into the cost of living. So let's go ahead and get into the cost of living. So what does the cost of living basically entail, okay? And what it really comes down to, it's comparing the prices of a range of goods and services, okay? And which folks like you and me spend their money, okay? And it, but it's also used as a, kind of a key indicator for determining relo folks' relocation plans, setting salary expectations, setting spending expectations, um, and, and basically trying to figure out exactly is this the best way, best thing for you to do from a financial perspective. Okay, and it's very, very important that you that you look at it from that perspective. Okay? And the, co the costs are both are mainly broken down into kind of the following categories: it's housing, it's healthcare, it's food and groceries, transportation, child care, utilities, and other critical. Experiences expenses or what, what you determine to be critical expenses. That could be miscellaneous expenses, could be entertainment expenses, okay? And, and it looks at it from, stand, from weighing those, the importance of those particular categories, okay, on what your overall lifestyle goals and objectives are. Folks, housing, housing is one of the biggest expenses you're going to have. And whether you're looking at it from a, from renting, a rental perspective, or whether you're looking at it from an ownership perspective, it's still gonna be probably the single most significant expense that you're going to incur. The average rent around Fort Lauderdale is about 2,200 bucks a month, okay? The average home price runs about $574,000. Now, if you wanna get closer to the city, okay, or if you wanna get closer to the beach, those rental rates are gonna go up to about 3,100 bucks a month, okay? And the average home price is gonna to jump to about $800,000 for, for a home. Now. Does that mean that basically uh, everything runs at $800,000 and $500,000 for a home? Most certainly not at all. And what it comes down to is are you looking for a condo? Are you looking for a single family home? Are you open to a townhouse? Okay. Are you looking for an investment property? There's a lot of considerations that you need to think about before going ahead and, and make, jumping into it. But, but again, just from the standpoint of trying to kind of frame things uh, around housing. The other, some of the other expenses from a housing perspective are insurance, okay? It is not cheap, as we've said in some of our other videos, it is not cheap to insure property down here in South Florida. Some of it is due to the frequency at which things can occur, like storms, hurricanes, and damages. Uh, um, in other cases, it is based upon, as we said in some of our videos before, the preponderance of fraud. You can go ahead and check out our video about the things that you need to know about living in Fort Lauderdale to get more information on those kind of things. But basically, it's going to be a little bit more expensive from a housing perspective. You're close to the water, you're close to salt air, okay? Things are going to basically break down and require maintenance more often. And things that, that are outside of maintenance, damages from storms and hurricanes, okay, it's just going to be a little bit more expensive in taking care of those kind of things. Townhomes and villas and condos are usually a little bit less out of your pocket on these things because those costs are basically shared by everybody in your association. If you live in a condo, for example, and you have 60 units in your condominium building, then the cost for insurance and the cost for maintenance is basically spread out across all of the all of the owners and all the residents. So it makes it a little bit more affordable. That may be something that you want to consider looking at. Okay. The other thing is is taking a look at it from the standpoint of the association costs. Okay. Basically, anywhere you're going to live, unless it specifically says no homeowners association, you're going to be a member of an association. 
that, that has its good points, it also has its bad points. The good points are that you typically rep get representation for governmental type issues and governmental type things. The downside is, is that can, those, those fees can be a little, can be a little, little pricey and expensive. Those fees do, however, include your portion of insurance, your portion of maintenance, so your out-of-pocket may be less specifically for those types of things, but it could be a little bit higher from the standpoint of paying, you know, a couple hundred to upwards of a thousand dollars a month for the association, depending upon, again, where you live. Healthcare. Generally, healthcare costs have been increasing. Hospital costs, surgical costs, insurance costs, doctors and physicians, everything's been increasing. So it is going to be a little bit more expensive here than it may be in some of the other areas down around the country, okay? However, that all being said, Fort Lauderdale is a hub of healthcare. There are all types of healthcare options. There are all types of healthcare providers, service providers, everything from holistic providers to chiropractors to full serve, full service hospitals and doctors, all kinds of specialists, okay? You just need to kind of do a little bit of a homework, a little bit of your homework, okay, take a look around, okay? And, and again, like anything else, be prudent and be judicious in what you're choosing, okay? And reaching out. Now, one of the things we, I will tell you is that in many cases, when you talk to these healthcare providers, okay, they certainly want to make sure that they're giving you the best care that they possibly can. And, and they are very, very adaptable to what your needs are, and they are also cognizant that many folks are budget conscious. So talk to these things about your potential, talk to these your concerns with your potential healthcare provider. Reason number three, kind of food and groceries. So food and groceries are another consideration. And while we have a tremendous number of local and regional supermarkets, and we have some great local farmers that bring stuff to um, to the, to the farmer's markets that, that occur all the time. And prices down here can be a bit higher than the national average. I mean, an example would be, you know, going to lunch in, in the downtown area here in Fort Lauderdale, just going out for a very casual lunch, it's probably gonna run you about 20 bucks, okay? Fast food, go hit Mickey D's or go hit Wendy's, it's gonna cost you 10 bucks a person out of pocket, okay? You know, and if you start, if you're looking to, from a grocery perspective, okay, basically a pound of, a pound of boneless, skinless chicken breast, gonna run you about five bucks. Okay, a dozen eggs, large is going to run you upwards of five, upwards of five, five fifty to six bucks. Five pounds of potatoes is going to run you about six bucks. Okay, a bottle of wine, a decent bottle of wine, is going to run you about fifteen bucks. A six pack of domestic beer is going to run you about six or seven bucks. Okay, even a loaf of bread is going to run you about four bucks. So um, these are things you need, you need to kind of keep in common. It is a little bit more expensive for groceries and stuff down here. A lot of that is due to having stuff to have it needing to be shipped in. Okay, so again, it's something to consider while you're dealing with stuff down here. So it is a little bit more expensive for groceries and food here in Fort Lauderdale due mainly to the need to have things shipped to Fort Lauderdale. We don't have a lot of processing here in the city of Fort Lauderdale or here in the general area. So when you're looking at moving to Fort Lauderdale, you need to take into consideration that things in, in and around the Fort Lauderdale from a grocery perspective, they are going to be a little bit more, ex more expensive than say if you were in the breadbasket of America um, from, a, from a farming perspective. Transportation costs will depend whether you own a car or not. If you do, okay, expect to spend around 200 bucks a month for on gas and maintenance. Okay, if you don't have a car, that's not a big deal. Okay, there are plenty of public transportation options available here in Fort Lauderdale, um, and you can get a monthly pass for typically somewhere between 55 and 65 bucks a month to go ahead on and you know use a mass transit, the Broward County Transit here at services here in Fort Lauderdale. There's a tri rail that basically can get you from any of the airports from Miami to Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport, up way up all the way up to West Palm Beach International Airport. There are some free, some free local uh, transportation options to take a look at. So there is a lot, there are a lot of transportation options here in Fort Lauderdale. Um, also, basic, uh, we, we use Uber quite a bit um, and Lyft, so they can kind of get you anywhere you want to go to. And if you're going to go out for a night in the town, it's probably the best thing to do would be to, to, to look at using something like Uber or something like Lyft. Um, not only from the standpoint of being able to enjoy yourself, it also alleviates you the, from the cost, of the cost of parking and the potential aggravation, especially during the high season here, um, of trying to find a parking spot close to where you want to be. Just give them a call, they'll drop you off wherever you want to get, wherever you want to go to, go out and do whatever you're going to do, give you, have them give, me, give you a call, and either take, take you back to where you parked your car if you're further out, or take you back home. Something to consider when you're when you're trying to get around Fort Lauderdale and surrounding areas. Childcare. Childcare is another expense that, as those of you with children can attest to, can certainly add up. The average cost for daycare around here for one child is anywhere between 800 and 1,000 bucks. 
for uh, a month. I mean, it's it's it's, and that's kind of it's kind of about the same for what we've seen uh, pretty much everywhere else. Our children are mostly grown now, so we're actually looking at it from the standpoint of what it would cost for our grandchildren to come down here and stay down here and live with us for a while if uh, if our kids want to want to relocate down to Fort Lauderdale. So we're looking at it very very carefully. The other thing you're going to be looking at is um, you know prices do depend upon what kind of care you're looking for. Obviously, infant care is a little bit more expensive than toddler care, okay, and then which is actually um, you know even less expensive than uh, than looking at before school and after school care if you need to have those if you if both folks are working, okay. But basically, what you're looking at preschool a month is going to run you about 850 bucks a month for preschool. Non-public schools, there's a, there are a lot of public schools down here in Fort Lauderdale, uh, the Fort Lauderdale area and in Broward County. Okay, but there are also a number of options around private schools non, or non-public schools, magnet schools, charter schools, parochial schools, and full-blown private schools, and they can vary from a couple hundred bucks a month to to upwards of twenty to thirty thousand dollars a year. So, looking at it from the standpoint of child care and education is something that you definitely want to consider if you are moving down here or looking to relocate with your family. Even with, with the great weather down here, we obviously we're not turning the furnaces on too frequently, okay? But we do from, from basically the months of, I would say, late April, early May through late October, early November, you're pretty much running the air conditioner uh, most of the day, okay? And so the monthly electric for uh, monthly electric cost for an air conditioner, assuming your your property is uh, where you're living is, is energy efficient, uh, for about a thousand square foot to 1,500 square foot place, it's going to run you about 170 bucks a month. Okay, monthly internet's going to run you about 60 to 60 to 70 bucks a month, depending upon what you're looking at. Cable, if you're living in a condo, okay, a lot of times the basic cable is included in your condo fee. In, in many cases now, associations are doing the same thing. But regular regular mm -hmm. cable uh, was gonna run you 50 to 60 bucks a month. Now, there are all kinds of add-ons that you can do and all kinds of things that you can look at doing, okay? One of the nice things, if you're living in a, in a community, especially ones that have lakes or have ponds or have canals in there, is that in many cases, what they're, do, what they're doing is they're pulling the water out for irrigation out of those lakes, canals, and ponds. That's one of the reasons, that's how they keep uh, Fort Lauderdale and the surrounding areas so green and it kind of cuts down on the costs of, of, of water costs and the cost of utilities. So take a look at those things when you're, when you're kind of evaluating um, what, what your costs are going to be. Um, overall, from a standpoint of utilities, uh, to kind of summarize, you're probably looking at somewhere between, uh, in a condo, you're looking at somewhere between 275 to 400 bucks a month for your utilities. Townhouse maybe a little bit more, maybe, maybe 350 to 500. A single family home, depending upon the size of the home and whether or not you have a pool, or whether or not you have a heated pool, and a bunch of, a number of other things. I mean, in some cases, it could be upwards of six or 700 bucks a month. But again, kind of keep those into consideration from the standpoint of the cost. Now, from what we've heard, from some of our friends that have, that have relocated here and some of the folks that are contacting us that are coming from different areas of the country, okay, this is actually pretty reasonable. In New York, it's a whole heck of a lot more expensive. California, well, I don't even want to go into there because the rolling brownouts kind of kind of kill everything in there. Not that we're doing any, not that we're saying anything about California. It's just that we're hearing that it, that things are kind of moderating down here, and people are are, are seeing that. Hey, you know, overall, it is not as expensive as some of the other areas uh, around the country for, for utility costs. This is actually pretty reasonable. In New York, it's a whole heck of a lot more expensive. California, well, I don't even want to go. Other kind of key expenditures for consideration, okay, and basically we're looking at um, expatison.com uh, for living in Fort Lauderdale. This is kind of their view of kind of giving us an, an understanding and an idea of what some of the costs are going to be. So if you're going to go out for dinner for two at an average restaurant, it's going to run you about 50 bucks. Okay, dinner for two in the downtown area. Look to spend 75 to 100, um, and that may include one, you know, one adult beverage before dinner, a glass of wine, and, and possibly uh, a, a, an after dinner beverage or dessert. Okay, movie for two is going to run you about 25 bucks. Okay, theater tickets. We do have a lot of theaters down here between Fort Lauderdale Theater, between Fort Lauderdale, and between the Broward County Playhouse. Uh, what's going on in Boca, what, what they have in Boca Raton, and all of the all of the cultural and theatrical productions that are going on throughout the, uh, the the Treasure Coast here, it's going to run you about 225 bucks for decent tickets in it for a theater production. Okay, you're going to go hit a bar. A mixed drink is going to cost you about 13 bucks. Premium brands are going to pop it up to about 18 or 20 bucks. Okay, a kind of a Gucci coffee bar, or what we could refer to as a Gucci coffee bar. Okay, it's going to run you about six bucks for a cup of coffee. Going, going to a sports bar is going to run you about five bucks for, for domestic beer. Um, if you want to join a fitness club, then it's going to run you about 50 bucks a month. There are some 
some clubs that offer annual specials or monthly specials, but I would count on about budget about 50 bucks a month, okay? Tennis court rental is going to run you about 17 bucks uh, a rental, and if you want to play on a public golf course, it's going to run you about 35 bucks for greens for green fees. Uh, maybe a little bit more if you want to have a cart thrown in. If you're looking at clothing and stuff like that, it's pretty much consistent with the rest of the with the rest of the of uh, the country. A pair of jeans, Levi's or Simmons, is going to run you about 50 bucks. Okay, a nice summer dress coming going to one of the one of the uh, one of the regular stores like Zara or H and M. It's going to run you about 50 bucks. A pair of Nikes is going to run you about 100 bucks. Okay, a pair of men's business shoes for those of uh, for those of us that are freak that are that need to wear business shoes on a on a reoccurring basis basis or a frequent basis. It's going to run you about 115 to 125 bucks for shoes. Okay, personal care toilet paper four rolls is going to run you about four bucks a buck a roll. Okay, a tube of toothpaste three bucks. Popular a popular shampoo Head and Shoulders or whatever else run you about five bucks. Um, where I get my hair cut, 25 bucks, okay? Women's hairstyling with the tip is gonna run you about 150 to 200 bucks, okay? Um, other things, an urgent care visit, whether you're covered by insurance or not, is gonna run you about 119 bucks. Whether your insurance picks it up as part of the health care, okay, that would be terrific. Um, but it's, those are the kind of things that you're going to be looking at from the standpoint of the cost of living down here from a personal, from your, from your personal care perspective. Twenty-five bucks, okay. Women's hairstyling with the tip is going to run you about 150 to 200 bucks, okay. Um, other things, an urgent care visit, whether you're covered by insurance or not, is going to run you about 119 bucks. Whether your insurance picks it up as part of the health care, okay, that would be terrific. Um, but it's, those are the kind of things that you're going to be looking at from the standpoint of the cost of living down here from a personal, from your, from your personal care perspective. So taxes are definitely something to consider. Now, Florida is one of the few states that doesn't impose a state income tax. They still need to have taxes to pay for things. They need to get it to others from other sources. Real estate taxes is probably one of the most significant ones. You're going to pay a little bit higher in real estate taxes here in Fort Lauderdale than you would in some of the other areas of the country where the states do have their own, where they do impose a state income tax. Okay, it's just something to be considered. I mean, there's there's higher property values. Properties cost more, okay? Properties are being so bought and sold at, with, a, with a greater degree of frequency than a lot of the other areas within the, within the country. Um, there's also a, a wider variety of the purpose of the purchases. Obviously, if you're buying things from a, from a, from a personal residence, a primary residence perspective, you'll be, you'll be eligible for the homestead exemption um, on your primary residence. You're, if you're buying from an investment perspective, then you need to take that into consideration as part of your overall investment strategy and what you're going to be looking at from the standpoint of the impact on your on your cash flow from an investment perspective. But I'm sorry, folks, I digress a little bit here. Okay. Sales tax. Um, I mean, if income is not taxed, then basically the way I look at it is if you're not taxed on what you earn, okay, then probably you're going to, you're going to be taxed on what you spend. Okay. And sales tax down here is a little bit higher. I think the overall sales tax is about 6% for the Florida state sales tax. Fort Lauderdale and the surrounding areas in Broward County impose another 1% on, on top of that. So you're looking at about a 7% tax rate for your purchases. Now, one of the cool things about it is that not everything is subject to sales tax. Some of the some of the things that are the more critical items and the more urgent items, diapers, food, milk, bread, eggs, stuff like that, they don't charge taxes on that. Okay, but when you do when you buy a car, if it's a luxury car, when you're going out and buying luxury items, the tax you may find is a little bit higher. One of the other things that taxes that taxes high on down here and it kind of contributes to the transportation cost is that there is a higher tax than some of the other surrounding states um, on fuel. Fuel tax is a little bit higher and for stuff like alcohol and cigarettes and stuff like that, the taxes are, very, are, are considerably higher than some other states. Not as high as New York, for example. I was just up there recently um, and uh, was talking to somebody about it. I don't smoke, but folks that do smoke up there are basically looking at 12 to $14 for a pack of cigarettes up there in New York. It's nowhere near that bad down here, but the taxes for alcohol and for cigarettes is, is higher than other, than other areas. So again, folks, something you need to take into consideration from a tax perspective. Look at it from, from that perspective. If you have any questions about that, please feel free to reach out. We can point you to some websites to take a look at. We can point you to some, some information that we gathered in doing op, not only our assessment as to where we want to be when we came down here, but also helping folks out that, were, that, are, that are kind of on the fence in regards to relocating down here and looking at the financial perspective of it. So please feel free to reach out um, with any questions you guys have. Drop it in the box below. Okay, let us know what's going on. Let us know what your thoughts are. Let us know what your concerns are. We'll get straight back to you.
Thank you for some information that we gathered and doing not only our assessment as to where we folks. While the overall cost of living in Fort Lauderdale is high, it's roughly about 11.5% higher than the national average, which compared to other cities, um, you know, compared to other cities looking at places like websites like salary.com, okay, but, okay, when we went back out compared to, to some of the other larger cities, San Francisco is like 86% higher than the national average. New York runs about 80% higher than the national average. Washington, D.C., 56% higher, and for some of our friends up in Boston, one of the reasons they're looking to come down here is that living in Boston is about 50 to 51 percent higher than the national average. So when you look at it from, the, from that perspective, okay, it actually can be more reasonable, okay, and th that is one of the many reasons that we're seeing po more and more folks moving here, moving down to Fort Lauderdale, because when you compare it to a lot of the other bigger cities in the area, okay, it actually is, from an overall perspective, uh, a cheaper, than, cheaper than some of the cities. Like I said, New York, San Francisco, Washington, D.C., Boston, to name a few. Chicago is certainly more expensive than, um, than living down, than moving and living here in Fort Lauderdale. You know, while there's plenty to do down here and you certainly can't beat the weather, okay, you need to make sure that you plan for the expenses so you don't get caught off guard, okay? And the cost of living in Fort Lauderdale can be expensive, okay? It, it can be, but it really varies depending upon your lifestyle and spending habits. So if you got value from the video, please share with your friends who are thinking about moving to Fort Lauderdale. Don't forget to subscribe, okay? If, you're think, if you yourself are thinking about relocating down to Fort Lauderdale or you're interested in more information, go ahead and fill the information out below or go, like I said before, go ahead and go just book, just book a Zoom call with us from the, from the uh, right off of the right off of our video here. Take a look at some of our other videos about Fort Lauderdale, living in Fort Lauderdale, pros and cons of Fort, living in Fort Lauderdale, some of the neighborhoods of Fort Lauderdale. Take a look at those videos, okay, and get back to us and let us know what your thoughts are, okay. And until next time.